Yes Show, episode number 55. Yes, 55. That is a huge number, but not so huge. Like halfway to 100, I think. I'm not good at math, even though I'm Asian. So anyway, I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is my guest host, Kelpin from EQD. Hey everyone, glad to be here. How are you, Kelpin? Doing alright, a little tired, but I can't complain. Mm, I see that you got EQDM on, so that's going to be more work on your shoulders. <laughs> well, thankfully, um, I'm actually not really in charge of um, EQD music at the moment. Um, I'm a horrible programmer and stuff like that. <laughs> so right now, it's getting its pieces ran through with our um, with our um, coder Hypermark, who is um, a very good friend of ours uh, he, over here at EQD. And he's been helping develop the website over the past um, couple months, in fact. And um, also Serial Velocity, who's our resident um, code monkey guy. <laughs> he, he knows way more code than um, all of us combined. So they're going to be working out the bugs over the next several weeks. Awesome. Can't wait to explore it. So we, we'll talk about EQD music later on the show. So before we start, um, Kalpain, favorite pony and favorite episode? Still the same as before, or has it changed? Um, still the same as before, yeah. I think last time I was on the show, we haven't had the season finale. So that was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Elegant Twilight. <laughs> it still hasn't changed my opinion on her. I'm very confident that um, things will be just fine um, <laughs> coming into the next season. I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, so Twilight is best pony for you. So what about your episode? Has it changed? Um, I would still say, um, I think last time I said it was still Sisterhood Social, but giving it some thought now that this third season's all done, I would have to say I really like the whole, I don't know, I'm a sucker for like the Sisterhood kind of episode, so I'm really, I'm really like, I'm really liking Sleepless and Ponyville and um, Sisterhood's Social. Both of those are two of my favorites. Oh, well, I, I see a pattern there. I see a pattern there. And if there's a fourth season with sisters inside, I'm guessing that's going to be your favorite too. Oh, definitely. Okay, cool. So let's move into housekeeping. And as usual, I got nothing to do. Um, no housekeeping. Everything looks fine. And if something comes up, I'll just let you guys know on Twitter. <laughs> so moving on to news time. And in today's news time, the Brody documentary is going to Kansas City Film Festival. It's been a while since the Brony Doc came out and it's finally heading to a film festival. If you were one of the backers for the Brony Doc, you would have known that one of the goals for the documentary was to be featured at a film festival. On April 11 and 13, the Brony Doc will be featured at the Kansas City Film Festival. Attending the film festival will be producer Michael Brockoff, executive producer John Delancey and Lauren Faust. All three producers will be holding a Q&A panel at the film festival. Links can be found in the show notes. So, um, Kelpine, have you gotten your doc already? Yeah, um, I haven't actually gotten the documentary yet. I have um, been meaning to do so, though. Um, I was waiting for the Blu-ray to come out. The thing is, though, is that um, I actually don't have a Blu-ray player. So even if I bought it, I um, wouldn't be able to watch it yet. So uh, something maybe I'll do, maybe I'll get with my tax rebate. Oh. But um, with the documentary itself, I'm really excited about this news, aren't you? Yeah, I'm I'm excited and I got my Blu-ray copy and the digital copy from them. And well, the documentary is awesome. I'm I'm just wondering what would the reaction of the people from the Kansas Film Festival are going to think? Kansas, right? Yeah, Kansas. Yep, in Kansas. I wonder how they are going to re react. Hopefully they'll give them um, some good accolades when it comes to the um, documentary category for their film festival. We'll just have to see. I'm sure some reports will probably be written about it when the um, festival actually goes on. Yeah, I I'm sure you guys will be on the ball on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, of course, our um, readers will be definitely on the ball with sending that stuff in. <laughs> with sending that stuff in. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, talking about documentaries, um, you want to take this one, Kelpin? I'll take it. Afterwards, after the, the Brony documentary is at the Kansas Film Festival, there's also some more news for the Brony documentary. It is going to be on Amazon. If you haven't seen it, because it's, you didn't want to download the digital copy, here's a chance to get a physical copy instead. 
You can get a physical version of the documentary at Amazon.com, the online shopping hub. The documentary comes in three versions, and they are in the main edition, which is just the documentary, extended interviews, and the complete edition, which includes the main and the extended interviews. The main edition and the extended interviews will cost $24.99 U.S. American dollars, and the complete edition will all cost $39.99 plus free shipping from Amazon.com. If Amazon.com doesn't ship to your country, you can always buy the documentary from the official website of the Brony Documentary. The prices are the same, and it includes shipping. You can find all those links in the show notes. So I've gotten mine from the website, and it's pretty awesome. With all these new options, I might just have to um, grab um, a copy myself. I actually have a trial edition of Amazon Prime going on. I might just have to, you know, actually go and buy from Amazon and get the super awesome shipping they have for that. Yeah, because um, the the thing here is, from what I noticed from the website and Amazon, is the the price are the same except if if you're buying from Amazon, the main edition and the extended interview, they cost about. Twenty four ninety nine, basically twenty five bucks. That does not include shipping. But if you do buy the complete edition, which is thirty nine ninety nine, basically forty, that includes free shipping. Um, but if you go from their website, it includes shipping. So basically, if you were to buy the standard edition with the extended interview, is twenty four ninety nine. That includes shipping, which is cheaper. But if you go buy the complete edition, that's forty bucks. With shipping, so basically, I don't know, same price, same thing. Uh. Hmm, you're right. It would be a little cheaper on their um, actual website. Another thing to maybe even consider. I don't even. I don't know how Amazon exactly functions 100, percent but um, for listing on their site, I wonder if they take a little bit of the cut, you know, from hmm. DVDs that are actually purchased on Amazon. So. It might be best to just purchase from the Brony Documentary website to make sure that they, you know, get all the money that they deserve. True, true. I mean, the prices are the same, actually. But from what I can tell about Amazon, if your purchase is above um, 35 bucks, 30 bucks maybe, they'll ship it for free. Yeah, I think I think on certain items it's actually like twenty five dollars. So the twenty so the twenty four ninety nine one actually just misses out on super saver shipping by like a penny <laughs> or something like that. At more ponies <laughs> done. <laughs> just needed that one little bit more. Does the United States round up their total amount? Oh, and we don't because oh. since we have the penny still, uh-huh. we can do things in increments of one cent. Uh-huh. So. We do, we haven't um, joined a lot of other countries in the world where we've gotten rid of our one yeah. cent denomination yet. Well, because here in Malaysia, we used to have that. So basically, the prices are like five cents, like five cents in increment because nobody really wants to use the one cent anymore because they're copper and copper kind of poisonous if they're not kept well. Also, they're rather expensive to produce because copper is... Well, it's going up in price around the world. Yeah, true. But um, the way we did it here is we just joined the rest of the world where if it's one cent, two cents, it just dropped down to zero. And if three, four cents, it raises up to five. That kind of whole deal. I would really, really like that. (laughs) It would make shopping so much easier. Yeah, and also the thing here is they do mean tricks. When you go buy something, it will cost (laughs) $39.99. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and then, like, couldn't you just say 40 bucks? No, it's much cheaper that way. Yeah. I know, it just tricks your mind. That's just how it works. Yeah, especially for something you really want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so um, that's Amazon and the Brony Doc. If you want to get a cheaper version, um, there's the digital download, the $12.99, I think. But since you didn't want the digital, yeah, go get the Blu-ray. Much better, much more fun. And is the 100 bucks still available for the autograph by Lauren Faust and John DeLancey? Hmm, I actually don't know. Um, I would imagine people would try and snap it up pretty quick. So um, if it is available, um, time's running out. <laughs> Get out there and make your purchase. Yeah, true, true. Uh, we're a bit too late, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> for even mentioning it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> It's um, it's good to mention. I hope the people that um, did make the purchase ended up um, getting their merchandise just fine. I'm so jelly. I wanted that <laughs> one so much. 
Okay, let's move on to the last news. And the last news is Main 6 might use Skullgirl's engine. Wow, that sounded so wrong. <laughs> um, recently, Main 6 added Lauren Faust to their team. Now, the Skullgirl crew are offering them to use their Lab Zero engine license for free. In a recent stream by Mike Z, he stated that they will let Main 6 use Lab Zero's engine for their game for free if Skullgirl Indiegogo's campaign reaches a certain amount. And that amount is 725k. So what does this mean? Well, there is a high possibility that Main 6 crew will not be using their previous engine to run their game. And the output process for this new project is much faster. Links can be found in the show notes. So, this is big news for Main 6. This is this is huge news for Main 6. I did not see this coming at all. Well, there, there's been um, noise meeting in the fighting game community where um, Skullgirl Dev offered Main 6 to use their engines. I think this is it. But mm-hmm. I think Main 6 crew said they didn't want to use it because... If I'm remembering right, it'll take too much time to do the whole thing and stuff. But now that I'm thinking about it again, it's kind of logical to go with this um, Lab Zero engine for their new project. It depends on how easily I think they can get their um, art assets and everything else tuned to the Lab Zero engine and stuff like that. If it's an easy import from their current engine to the Lab Zero engine, I would imagine it could, yeah, it could end up saving them time and they would end up with a better product, I'd imagine. Right. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, like you said, um, it might end up taking more time and they don't want that. They already had all the stuff with the um, cease and desist and true, they're true. already far behind. <laughs> yeah, true, but what I'm thinking is this way because since they're doing a new project and it mm-hmm. has nothing to do with ponies. So basically, they're going to do something with girl characters or human characters. So mm-hmm. if they keep using their um, previous engine, it's going to be more hard work for them because they need to restructure the whole game to fit. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, so instead of... They have to... S- yeah. Yeah, you were saying? Well, yeah, you're right. They have to start over anyway because of the cease and desist. So they might as well start off using a easier to use engine right yeah some something that's developed already and since they're offering it for free if they if their indiegogo hits 7000 how do you spell that out 70 725k oh, i'm bad with numbers yeah 725000 dollars <laughs> yeah i mean well, that, that is a lot of money that is a lot of money but they are already over halfway with um 11 days to go yeah, true. I mean, I hope the Brony community helps in because um, Lauren Faust is working on the project and I want to see what they do. Yeah, I'm actually very curious to see what this is going to actually result in. It could be, well, I'm pretty sure it will be really, really cool. Lauren has some great ideas. You want to know something funny? Mm, what's that? Yeah, if the game is Milky Way and the Galaxy Girl. Oh, that actually would be really cool. It'd be really nice to see if she her utilize her characters for that kind of thing. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and they're like, Dan, go to print, make the game. <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Seriously, that would be fun if they do that. I think so, and I think her um, characters from the Galaxy Girls are varied enough and cool enough to actually design a um, fighting game around and stuff like that. That's true. They need to do, what, pixel artists for the game, and I think it'll take them a year if they get the engine from Skullgirls. Yeah, I'm sure. And plus, well, um, they're quite experienced from all the work that they put into the very, you know, first version, so things might go a little faster. Who knows? True, 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 true. And musicians, there are a lot of musicians in the community that are willing to help. So anyway, um, let's move on to, well, since we don't have guests, why not guess host time? Tell me, as I understand, EQD just launched their new sister site or sub-site, Ikea Daily Music. Yeah, it's more kind of a sub-site of ours um, instead of a sister site. Mm-hmm. It's um, something that um, we've been working on for the past um, few months or so to try and hopefully streamline the um, music um, experience that we have here on Equestria Daily. We've had um, some bumps in the road with our current system and stuff like that, and this is our hopefully our method of trying to 
iron out some of those problems. Okay, so how did the idea came up? Well, the idea sort of came up with just the sheer amount of music that we've been getting, and it's just it was incredibly taxing on our current system that we had going on. Our old system, in particular, had to do with、um, people sending in their music to us. It would go into a review folder, and、um, from what I know of the process, since I'm not really the person that handles too much music. Seth and a bunch of musicians in the community would review the music each day that they had, and they would come up with ones that they thought would, you know, be really good for the community. As and you know, they they thought that the music was good. They gave it a thumbs up, and it would get posted in spotlights and stuff like that. Thing is, though, as、um, time went on,、um, people would complain that you know. As we do sometimes with the pre-readers and stuff like that, you know, get complaints that oh they're too strict or they don't know what they're doing and that kind of stuff. And since we just get so much music a day, this kind of stuff piled up a lot faster than say with like fanfics and stuff like that. Since fanfics,、um, at least I would believe in general, take longer to longer to put together simply because of all the typing involved and that kind of stuff like that. I mean, I don't know about the music. Process as much since I'm I don't really do a lot of writing. Well, not not writing, but you know music, music and stuff、review. like that. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I haven't、okay. played I haven't played an instrument since I was in middle school. We wanted to try and address some of those concerns people were having that、um, we were being too strict and stuff like that. And what we did then was we did like music of the day and stuff like that. But the problem with that is that we then took basically everything that.、Um, We weren't going to spotlight, and we just put it in one big post, and it might not necessarily, it might not necessarily be pony. Some of the quality was the quality was very、Random. varied, yeah, and there was still some complaints about that particular system because it made it look like we were being lazy or something like that, and we still ended up getting complaints about the music of the day stuff. So we thought then the best way to do it is to just、um, let the community decide what they think is. The best music released that day, and let artists and other people、um, put up the music they find or the music they create, and let the community around、um, Equestria Daily Music decide on what's the best, and、um, it will get upvoted and viewed the most and stuff like that. It's sort of we're hoping it will be sort of like maybe like a、um, a film fiction kind of system where you know the stuff that people on the site really like will get. Push towards the top because the community actually likes it and stuff like that, and new music will get a chance. Hopefully, in maybe future randomized spotlights or something like that on the site as it gets developed and stuff like that. Hopefully, by involving the community greatly in this particular project, it will quell all of the kind of problems people had with our old system. No,、oh, understandable because well, if the community doesn't like what you're doing, let them do it. Yeah, let them decide what they think is the best, and just give them a a forum in which they can, you know, choose what they think is best. I think it would be a system that、um, I know there's bugs and stuff going on right now, and there's always room for improvement. But I think that once it's developed、um, a little bit more, and if we put some more time to it and listen to input from the community, I'm pretty sure that it'll become a a place that people will like to go. At least I'm hoping. I mean, I, I'm liking the idea already, and well, I do see bugs here and there, but、eh, it's just a beta. They they need feedback, so if you spot anything out of the ordinary, do let them know so they can fix it. Exactly, and we've already been getting emails and stuff like that. So the the system is working in that we are getting feedback, so we are very happy about that. Well, that's awesome. I'm sure we have some questions for EQD Music, but before that, my co-host Dan. Hi Norman. What took you so long? I overslept. I'm sorry. Yeah,、uh, you and your phone. Let me guess. You put your phone downstairs on off. No, I was charging. Indeed. So, it's got problems now. It just rejects calls on its own. <laughs>、uh, go get an iPhone. <laughs> so anyway, we got Calpin here, and Calpin just talk about EQD music. Okay. So I think you understand about EQD music, right? Well, I'm not very sure about it, so yeah, we'd like to learn some more about it. Okay, so I've asked how it got started. Go listen to the episode once it's out. 
So, Kalpain, um, who are involved in EQD Music? Is it still Sophisto or some other new people? Um, it's basically the same people from the site. Um, right now, currently, the um, main people that I have um, been working on it are um, our our guy who's really good at coding and such like that, um, Serial Velocity, as well as our a really good friend of our website, um, Hypermark. The two of them have been um, designing the site over the past um, couple months, and they are currently working on bugs and site improvements as they arise. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So this is a website for music community members, basically to promote music, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's a, it's a system that allows people to um, upload their own stuff or um, to upload other people's stuff so that um, the community can then vote on it and then the highest voted stuff will be the stuff that the community will see and stuff like that. So yeah. basically like all the old songs like um, Good Girl or even Discord from Eurobeat, they'll get up there and people will vote for them and stuff, right? <laughs> Exactly. The site also serves to be as a um, archive for music that's in the community. There's, um, from what I understand from the current system, there are um, going to be genre categories and stuff like that that will allow you to search this database that will allow you to find these particular um, songs that you're looking for and things like that. While right now, like on YouTube and stuff like that, you might look for pony music and stuff like that, but at the moment it's, you know, like with anything on YouTube, if unless you're like super specific for what you're looking for already, it can be really hard to find. So by just having a site like this, it allows people to browse by genres and um, artists and stuff like that that will allow them to easily find um pony music that they're interested in. So basically, this would be like EQD, but for music. Well, it is EQD music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So what makes it unique would be something like the rating system. What's that about the rating system? Because uh, there are other sites that allow you to upload pony music, like Pony FM, and then uh, there will be one more that's coming up. Oh no, there's one that's up EQ Beats or something like that. So this yes. one has a rating system, and that's I think what makes it unique, correct? I think so. I, have, I do admit I am not too much into the pony music scene, so I have not yet explored the other um, pony archive music sites and stuff like that. We do oh. hope to offer a um, unique experience, though, so we will um, try to implement features that the others might not have or implement features that might help complement with the other sites that are out there. Okay, true. From what I experienced, the whole site is... A- well, I won't say it's simple. That, that That's not the right word to say. Um, I think it's user-friendly and simplistic in design. And, well, I can easily understand what's going on. That's good. That's good. Um, it's also, you know, it's still a beta. So things will move around and will be worked on as... Um, as time goes on, of course. Yeah, that's true. But yes, we, we're, we're hoping that, um, it, since it is meant for the community, we are hoping for a design that is easy for people to understand right off the bat. Yeah, that's true. It's like if you have a music that you like, let's just say Daniel Anthony's uh, Twilight Sparkle style, you can just upload that and wait for people to vote. Mm-hmm. So, Dan, you, yep. uh, any thoughts on it? Like any questions you want to know? Oh, well, actually, I'm quite interested in this. And you see, I'm looking at it right now, and I find it's really, really user-friendly. You know, you just jump in, you know how to use it. Um, you're all ho- you're not hosting any music on the site, correct? It's all linked to YouTube and SoundClouds, right? It's not hosted there. Well, currently, we are um, just doing YouTube. We know that SoundCloud is a very um, important part of the community. It's just that right now, we just wanted to get it... Um, we just wanted to get it working so far with YouTube, and SoundCloud will come later. But yes, you are right. As far as I am aware, it is not so much. You are not actually uploading. Um, you are not uploading um, the videos or the sound files to the website itself. You are um, mainly linking to other services and stuff like that. That way, it keeps it bandwidth issues and stuff like that down on our site, and also makes it affordable for us. Ah, okay. Okay, so it's just a link site. Understandable, understandable. So I think if we got no more questions about EQDM... I mean, I do have a bit, but... Oh, yeah. okay, go ahead, man, go ahead. Oh, oh it's because, perfectly fine. Because uh, actually, from this, I've noticed that 
uh, on the side of uh, Everfree Network, they have a music rating system as well. It's just um, it's a little less complicated because it's more for just you know sequencing the music that's on the show. But I've noticed something is that they have some sort of defense against duplicate entries. Now, would EQD Music have something like this? Now, well, right now, um, I would imagine that it's something that we will implement in the future. I. I have read some of the comments that are in the EQD music thing saying that some people have um, accidentally submitted it a couple times. Um, I've, I've submitted, you know, um, entries a couple times. And um, I don't know if um, we have a system in place to do auto detection yet. Um, I would imagine we would because we also had um, some other people like um, Nighty from um, um, Film Fiction also look at the code and features and stuff like that and he helped actually design our um submitter that we use for events and stuff like that i don't know if it has an auto duplication process actually because we had to go back and actually delete things manually if i remember that right i mean i but, think maybe youtube links you can detect the same thing but some musicians they upload their same song twice or it gets re-uploaded by some mm-hmm. random brony and that could that could cause a bit of a problem because when bronies oh, upload yes. music and it, let's say it's a great song and it has a thousand upvotes, suddenly another one comes up and that gets 500 and it starts to break the votes. Oh, yeah, exactly. And also, um, another thing that could possibly happen is that um, people could then spam the site or something like that. We, I mean, we, have cap- we do have CAPTCHAs and stuff like that to try and keep, you know, attacks down and things like that. But um, you are right, is that um, an auto-duplication site would be really nice because an auto-duplication detecting thing would be very nice because um, if someone uploads the same thing multiple times, it could split votes and then something that's really popular could get sunk down because it just happens to have multiple copies of it up and different people saw them with different copies. So Mm -hmm. I think it's either something that's being worked on or it might um, be implemented already i'm not exactly sure I, as i said i'm not um into the complete technical details behind the site since i'm not one of the programmers okay mm-hmm. eqd being the number one pony news site out there i'm sure that you know there are a lot of brony haters out there has eqd itself received you know maybe ddos attacks or stuff oh there have been plans and stuff like that by um by more um Oh, more nefarious bronies and stuff like that, malicious bronies. The thing is, though, is that um, since the site itself is hosted on Blogger, Blogger. It's a, yeah, it's a Google site, it's almost impossible to attack Google. So we have had threats before, but they never materialized because you're attacking Google. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but because now um, EQD, I'm not, EQD Music, I'm not so sure where that's hosted, but it may seem a little, bo- little bit more vulnerable, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that that is um, something that we were concerned about with security and stuff like that, and it's something that we'll continue to work on as vulnerabilities um, actually appear. It's one reason why we started off with like a captcha um, kind of security kind of thing is because mm-hmm. um, people could you know Spam. misuse the uh, yeah misuse the uploading system and stuff ah. like that. So. As as I said, it isn't a beta, so we are going to be, of course, improving security and features as we go along. I was wondering about that because when I tried to upvote a song, uh, it, it asked me to type in a caption and like, okay, this is not EQD, so okay, just do it. So upvote. Yeah, yes. Um, we also implemented captcha for like um so that people can, hopefully, can't bomb the um scoring system too too much because it can since it's meant to be a community site and we're hoping that the scores can help determine what people like it would absolutely destroy the purpose of it if we you know if it wasn't secure enough to keep people from bombing um the scores down or or just upvoting like crazy on certain things so you know it's something that's gonna be you know something we're gonna work on to balance as time goes on Okay, cool, cool, because I'm looking at it again, and, well, there are some derpiness to it. Um, still beta site, understandable. And, well, I have to say, uh, it looks good all around. Um, I could, If I could just suggest something to you guys, why not do some kind of registration thing where you register and you can click on voting so you don't really need to use CAPTCHA that much? 
Well, I'm not exactly sure why, other than it might just be that building the database for it or something like that. It's something that it actually you don't takes know up how a lot more space. That's one thing. Really? Yeah. Oh. That's probably, building the user login database takes a lot of space. Oh, okay. That's probably yeah. That's probably something that was thought of when um, Serial and Hypermark were you know designing and stuff like that, as well as um, the other people behind the scenes that were helping us with it. Yeah, okay. That might have been a reason why. Also. Um, it could also be an- another reason why is that it could be to make it more accessible because there's people that don't sign up for anything out there but are but are willing to upvote things and stuff like that. So that might have also played a little bit into it. Yeah, understandable because sometimes I want to do stuff easily. And yeah, so what am I saying? Let's move on. That's why we have Facebook Connect. Yeah. <laughs> How many people use Facebook anymore? I do. Anyway, do you think that in the future, maybe EQD Music would have potential with this gigantic uprise of brony radio stations around the world? I mean, you're putting, you're probably gonna put Saber Spark out of business because he's the one that does the top forty brony songs of the year or the month or something like that. Sometimes, you know, and this is gonna give out a, ra- this is gonna already start a rating system which will rate probably the best brony songs in the world. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, is that well. Everyone does systems, everyone does these things a little bit differently. Um, as how there's multiple news sites out there, there's going to also be all, multiple, you know, you know, top 40 lists and stuff like that out there. Because the, the way that the rate, the rankings are done, there's going to be, you know, different. People are going to like Saber Sparks, you know, how he Silent. ranks things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, how we, how the community that we have around EQD Music rates things might not appeal to everybody so i don't think you'll be too big of a competition with the other things out there it's just another place to go to hopefully help people find music yeah. from what i understand um eqd music is driven by the community so if any song goes there like example pony phonics lullaby for a princess that has 304 upvotes so it's driven by the community instead of one person's opinion Plus votes from his side of the pond. Was the upvoting and downvoting in any way inspired by Reddit? I'm not sure because we don't really actually have very many people on Equestria Daily that actually visit Reddit all that often. I know Serial doesn't. <laughs> uh, it could be from there. Oh, yeah, because I was looking at it, most of these sites just have you know the like button, like Facebook or SoundCloud, just a like or heart shape or a thumbs up. Yeah, you're and right. The first time seeing music is downvotes. There is a you know, a trend nowadays to just go towards upvoting and stuff like that because it seems like upvoting and downvoting causes problems. So, I don't know. I think, as some of you may remember, um, we used to have upvoting and downvoting on comments back in the day, mm. I don't know, half a year ago or something like that. And we took that away because it caused trouble. I think we're just trying out the upvoting and downvoting system right now. And if it works well, we'll keep it. And if it seems to cause drama and trouble, we might just stick with a um, thumbs up system. Okay, I mean, but I think for music, you need to have that downvote thing because sometimes people want to see, huh, why is this song good? And versus how many people think that it sucks. And then I'll listen to mm-hmm. it and have my own opinion. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because um, something can be, like on YouTube, for instance, something can be viewed like 10 million times and. Um, Say it has just say YouTube just had how many likes it's gotten. It could have maybe a hundred thousand likes, and if you can't see the dislikes, you can't tell if it has like maybe nine hundred thousand dislikes. You yeah, know what I mean? True. I mean, you, yeah, you, you, you need to have you need to have a balance, uh, and you like need to see the lightsaber. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. the song I exactly. just mentioned just now, it has three hundred and five upvotes and seven downvotes. I mean, you you can tell the song is good. Just some people yes. don't like that kind of thing yeah. so we so for something that's you know more content driven like this we might more than likely just keep the upvotes and downvotes system and stuff like that very similar to youtube actually i think maybe youtube was actually the inspiration for this instead of reddit i'm mm-hmm. not sure yeah youtube the comments have that too just noticed yeah yeah mm-hmm. you, you should notice then because your song that one i mentioned before it yeah. has what <laughs> it has a fair share of his dislikes yeah yeah the system of downvoting, I don't know um, how it affects the ecosystem of uh, EQD music, but I know for Everfree Radio, if, that if you downvote a song 20 times, it's removed from the playlist. 
Yeah, that that's playlist then because they're kind of running a radio station there where yeah, no. where people if people say they don't like this song, out you go, something new comes in. But it's, it's a very indexed system, meaning that it's they don't show how many upvotes and how many downvotes. It's more like an upvote increases one point, a downvote decreases one point, and it has that kind of merit score system or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it has an overall scoring system. Yes. Yeah. I don't think uh, EQD Music will do something like that. It's just a reference guide to people who wants to listen to songs. Like if you click on a category and you say, I want to hear hard style. And, huh, okay, the hard style tab is not working. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's still we, some things that need to be fixed. And, well, the, the site only did launch like five hours ago. Yeah, it's <laughs> so. true, it's true. Open beta. Take I'm it. taking a step back and looking at it with all these arrows. It looks like a share market. <laughs> <laughs> no, but still, but, um, uh, still, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you, um, that you're taking a look at it and you see potential in it. Well, we're going to be working on it and um, hopefully get it up to its full potential in true. the months ahead. True, true. I'm really liking this, and if things work well, there's future in this. We're hoping so. We wanted to do something um, good for the music community. So does this mean the end of, you know, EQD music posts? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, from the from the sounds of it, there will be the end possibly of the... Um, music of the of day. The music of, yeah, the music of the day posts. Because um, since the music of the day posts were pretty much just a aggregate of what's out there anyway, it seems kind of redundant considering we have this website now that should be collecting basically everything that's been created that day and put onto this site for archive. So we'll more than likely keep the spotlight posts, you know, like we'll take the, what's the most popular out there on maybe EQD music or what we just see is, you know, really flooding our inbox <laughs> and that'll be our spotlight music posts. Okay. Uh, I, I think this is the most streamlined system for you guys right now. So because music of the day, sometimes from what I heard from our co-host Charlie, he said that he doesn't have the time to listen to music of the day. Yeah, as you can see it's kind of like um, it's kind of like giving you a taste of what Seth had to do. It, it, he had to listen to every single one of those songs oh. to try and find to find what's good. So now you have to go into music of the day and listen to each one to find which one is good for you. See what I mean? Oh. God bless you, Seth. We're sorry, <laughs> Seth. We abuse you. But I see that, you know, voting systems in general have this kind of flaw. And I noticed in my in my music player, like most music players have this, like iTunes has a play count. And newer songs will lose out to older songs because older songs are in the database longer. Mm, not so, you know, it's like, you know, if you have an old song, like Mando Pony's been in the fandom since forever. And, you know, his songs will probably have a trillion upvotes. And the new songs that come in would have to like work twice as hard to get up to his level. So mm. do you think there'll be like a hog on the number one spot? We we'll might have to um, do some modifications and stuff like that to make sure that um, number one spot isn't kept the same all the time. I know that, um, for, for instance, on Blogger, you know we have our popular posts type of um, system we have on the side? Yep. Well, to make sure that, the, like, for instance, something that had like 100,000 hits, you know, like an aberration because it was a big news article or something like that, doesn't stay on there forever... Like, after a week or something like that, the, um, the blogger algorithm or something like that gives, like, less priority to that, and it drops down as um, time goes on. So mm-hmm. that's why things that, like, are incredibly popular eventually disappear out of the popular post section on the site is because of age. So age is factored into uh-huh. it as well. So maybe we can do something similar to that is maybe have two categories, like what's popular this week, and then have a popular, ah, yes. and then have a popular all time. Well, uh, Kalpin, you already have. <laughs> I'm looking at it, and it's there. Top music of the day, the week of, of all time. Oh, well, there you go. See, so we problem solved. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. We brownies um, are really, really fast. Yeah, but, but <laughs> I understand. I understand because seventy-one upvotes on a city flood shy. Wow. Yeah, I understand your concern, Dan, and you want new music to come up, so. I mean, it's happened because on my iTunes, this number one song is still the number one song after six months. Yeah, because you keep playing the song over and over again. Not just that, because the other songs, even though I play them, it still has to fight with the top one, and I play in shuffle and not paying attention to what's going on. So eventually that count still goes up. 
Well, we're not we're, we're not talking about your music player now. We're talking about EQD music. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying that it could apply the same kind of thing because when something is there longer, it will absorb more. It has more of a chance to absorb more likes. So now with this, you know, with music of the week and day, and well, you can probably go on to the hour very soon. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> it's already going so fast. Okay, we're we're digressing here. We're, we're talking shenanigans now. So um, I, I think that's all of the concerns that we have in mind for now. Um, is it? Then uh, we we done with EQD music. Yeah, we'll just bombard your inbox if we have any more. Indeed, as <laughs> usual. There's one thing to bring up about the speed of everything. As I did mention, we did just launch this, so everyone's going nuts, um, doing things to it and adding things and voting on things. So just give it a little bit, and things will probably slow down a little bit, so where you know it isn't as hectic. Indeed. So anyway, that was EQD Music. Thanks again, Kelpin, for coming down and talking to us about it. Yeah, no problem at all. So, um, hope people like it. Oh, I know, I do, because this is going to be a reference guide to get music. <laughs> I'm glad. So anyway, um, why not we talk to you, Kelpin? Because we hardly get you on here. Uh, yeah, sure. The hardly. He's right. one of the only few to appear twice. Well, <laughs> not all the time. Come on, he's from EQD. He's busy. So we're him up. It's true. Um, we, we'll <laughs> try and make it short. So, um, last week we had the people from Ponygaff on, and something interestingly enough popped up. You had one of Lauren Faust's drawings? Yes, I actually do have one of Lauren Faust's drawings. I have the original developmental sketch for um, Twilight Sparkle. Explain yourself, because isn't that like 6,700? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone seems to remember how much that went for back in the day. Um, I don't know. It was for charity, and I'm a, actually a huge um, charity nut. So if it's if there's something out there for charity and it's involved in something that I really like, um, I have a hard time Saying not no. participating. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that it's interestingly enough because we talked to... Mike Grey Wolf and who was it again? Mike Grey Wolf and Orca, Orcasta. And they said that you were in the Reddit community, not Reddit, sorry, in the NeoGAF community. And uh, it was interesting because we didn't talk to you about that because I got no idea. Yeah, it was um, one of the very first communities I joined when I got into um, <laughs> into the Pony community. I, I think I joined um, actively in the NeoGAF community in May in 2011. Ah, so it was before Bronies then. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, one Bronies are just new. <laughs> Not yet, man. You, you were in May, so meaning uh, you were like five months away before Ponies came out. <laughs> oh, well, remember, Ponies came out in 2010. Oh, really? No. Oh, damn, that shows how... Yeah. Oh, man. I, nice I, I you're feel... having fun. I'm feeling like a fool right now. Hmm, okay. I made the same mistake as well. Um, yeah, pony time is crazy thing. It's easy to get your dates mixed up when you're talking about ponies. Uh, because people forget that pony came out in 2010. No, 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 no. Friendship is Magic came out in 2010. Pony came out in 1980. Okay, you want to be technical <laughs> about it. So, um, how did you get the whole drawing thing? What's the process like? Did you have to... Um, well, from what I understand, it's eBay, right? Yes. Um, the entire thing, the entire story behind it is that, um, well, back in 2011, the, you, there was the earthquake in um, Japan. And Lauren Faust, to try and earn some charity money to send over to Japan, um, offered up some of her developmental drawings of a lot of the um, pony characters up for... Um, up for sale, and she sold them off for a relatively cheap price um, at the time. She wasn't really expecting to get too much for, from it, from what I from what I understand. And what happened was is that someone, one person, ended up buying a bunch of these sketches and thought that they could get a lot more for them for Lauren, and then you know send it off to um, Japan for the relief effort. So they got in contact with Lauren and they then set up these um, eBay auctions with a majority of the drawings. They still kept, I think, like one that they really actually, you know, really, really wanted. And then they put up for auction a bunch of the other ones. Um, I think Applejack was one of them. Pinkie Pie when she had wings. Um, 
Twilight Sparkle, of course. Oh, and um, Lauren did a um, just for those auction. Yeah, she did Derpy. She drew Derpy for that, and they were then put up on eBay, and they were done. I think, I think they were done uh, like a new one each week or something like that. Some there was very little overlap. I think like when one ended, one then began, and um, there were the sales throughout the weeks. Um, I think of April or early May, something like that, and they. They all sold for four-digit numbers. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I remember that if if I were to look at my previous show notes, I, I can get all the numbers. I remember oh, that. Yeah. That was my first episode on the show where we were talking about those auctions. Really, you, you were on that one? Yeah, that one, episode seven. It was like you were looking at it, and then he he he, he, he saw I think um. Six thousand seven hundred, and he's put on sixty-seven thousand. I'm like, dude, you can buy a car with that. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh, I don't have it in my show notes. It's in the show. Uh, but still, um, it, it, it's for a good cause. So all around, good on you, man. Yeah, thanks. It was um, it was my pleasure to participate in that. And thanks to the um, pony community and um, those auctions, the auctions ended up raising somewhere around like fifteen thousand dollars for the community for well not the community but for the relief effort and it was um really really um it was a really amazing thing one of the community's first like really big you know charity efforts i think and showed that the pony community could you know get to behind charity efforts and do good things and then and then now look where we are we have you know what the brony thank you fund chair um the what was it? Seeds of Kindness? Yeah, Bronies yeah. for Good. And all these other charity things that we're doing all the time. And it's just fantastic. It's nice to see that we're, where we got started back then with those charity auctions has really blossomed into something that's really, really awesome. Cool, awesome. Because our community is one awesome crew of people who love to do good work. They constantly and consistently blow me away. Indeed. I'm looking at what Dan said about uh, the charity drive. Um, did you buy the one with Twilight sitting down or re- sitting down reading a book or something else? Um, I bought them. Actually, I'll link it here in um, the chat here so that you can add it to your show notes um, if you want to. Really? Yeah, because I actually got a picture of it and I put it on my um, DeviantArt page. Okay. It's not the one because the one I'm looking at is something different. And I think that one is the second run of the whole charity drive with Lauren Foss doing drawings. There, there I is. Think oh, so. this one, this one, the originals, right? The first. This would be the first. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Oh, and... yes, yeah. This was the second run. This was the one that was done in um, April of 2012, and they easily beat um, the amount of money that I spent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like what three times more. <laughs> yeah, and I think Lauren did these sketches. Um, I don't know if she did them later on or not i don't know if she did them just for these auctions or if they were also development sketches i think well it signed off as 2008 so it looks like a development schedule right it does yeah it looks like on the um actual ebay link it says say it's a pony style um guide pose revision for her so it is one of the originals this is expensive pony is an expensive game <laughs> yeah now you know you you thought you thought building a gaming rig pc it was expensive? Oh no! <laughs> Try buying pony art from Lauren. Welcome wow. to Ponyville, my friend. <laughs> oh, boys, uh, I'll exchange rate for bits is like wow. I'll add in the <laughs> picture from you, Kelpin, into the show notes because what, what, what was Kelpin's exchange rate for equestrian bits? Uh, not <laughs> Kelpin, sorry, serial velocities. <laughs> exchange rate for bits. That was like <laughs> what a thousand yes, bits. Is. In this article recently. <laughs> oh boy. We now know that you're from the uh, NeoGAF community and you were one of the person that bought Twilight. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, one of the originals. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love this one post from some, uh, from uh, Hoi Karnage. How do you spell that? Uh, he said that you, so you're the one that stole the winning bit away from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta admit, there was some stiff competition for all that. So you had to put up quite a fight for it. 
Indeed. Yeah, there was um, someone. Uh, yeah, well, uh, apparently him now. I didn't know who I was bidding against, but um, it was da- it was down to the wire. <laughs> so wow. I managed to get it like in the last minute. <laughs> so night before the win. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, be sniping. <laughs> I, miss I know. I feel. That. I, I feel bad about sniping and stuff like that, but it was so intense, and they were, you know, actively bidding against me too. So, I mean, did you manually snipe, or did you get a bot to do it? <laughs> Um, I think I manually did it. Wow. <laughs> you, Nowadays, you, everyone is botting the snipes and is losing all the fun. You know what they, <laughs> you know what Twilight say? This is my drawing and I want to look at it! <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I think we talked to Calpine for long now. Dan, any more questions for Calpine or should we end this? How are you feeling now, Calpine? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you have... Um, another question or two, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, I mean, it's just like, you know, we always tend to keep our guests up so late thanks to our beautiful time zone. <laughs> um, I'm feeling okay, and I'll probably be up for a while longer, actually. Okay. Yeah, a while longer doing your stuff, man, because we tend to disturb people like, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of sleepy, yeah, okay, bye, then go to Team Fortress. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but EQD, you're running it really well, so, you know, keep up the good fight. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, We try our best. Yeah, it's true, true, because I love to visit EQD on a daily basis to fight for news, which Daniel will do next week, because he's doing the show notes for next week. Yep. (laughs) Have (laughs) fun, Dan. Oh, I I, I know, I know, even though... I mean, I throw throw EQD into Flipboard for my tablet, and then it looks pretty much like a nice magazine layout there. Have any of you tried that? (laughs) No, um, tablet for, is it available on iOS? Oh, yeah, definitely, it's Flipboard. Oh. That's right, is this the um, new application that was released like yesterday or today or something like that? No, nah, it was released quite about Ooh. a few years ago, but it, it takes oh. an RSS feed and it makes it look like a magazine, so Ooh. I like reading it like that. Dan, oh, Dan. yeah, that's really cool. Dan, um, something new, EQD just had its own app. Oh, Okay. Uh, it's called the EQD app. Wow, I'm glad, glad you mentioned it, um, Calpain, because I kind of forgot, of, forgot about it. I thought this, there was an app called Ponu for Android that basically was <laughs> pulling everything from EQD. Oh, that, that sounds bad. <laughs> I mean, I, didn't, well, I don't think it was everything from EQD, but multiple sources, but its categorization seemed very familiar. <laughs> yeah, uh, long story short, EQD just... Um, develop an app for EQD. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a third. Um, it's actually um, given to us by a third party. Um, a person um, just really wanted to contribute back to the community and design this app um, for us. Wow. It, it still has some bugs to be worked on and stuff like that, but um, he's getting some feedback and um, whatever's going on at the moment with that is being worked on. So is it still in beta? Bugs. Um, no, it's um. It's just something that he's um, bent. Uh, well, I guess you could say it's still in beta because there is bugs to be worked on and stuff like that. He, I mean, you did just do this in his free time. So I guess you could say it's open beta. Yeah, okay. it, it's, it's called Equestria Daily uh, now in app form. Yeah, it's the app for Equestria Daily. It has news, art, fiction, and videos. Basically like EQD, but more streamlined. Yeah, for your mobile. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is this is awesome if you want to look at EQD on the go. But I'm not used to EQD on the go. <laughs> I am. Well, trust me, once you look at this, your whole perspective of EQD on the mobile change. It's supposed I mean, to be I faster. EQD like raw on the site, you know, like that. Yeah, and I do too on my own tablet, and I notice it can be a little slow and a little frustrating at times. So hopefully once, the, um, once we have the... Um, bugs worked out of the app um, and we get some more feedback and stuff like that. It'll be a very a very, very convenient thing for our viewers. So, this is this guy uh, Game Leon? Yeah, that'll be him. That's oh. his name. So, uh, I have, uh, from what I understand about doing stuff on the App Store, you need to pay to be on there, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. If he did, then that's his, well, I guess his way of giving back. Well, if he's an, if he's an active developer, he would, have an, he would have a license and an account already, so yeah. Yeah, but still, you need to oh, pay to true. get on there. So um, It's a subscription, $99 US a year for Apple. 
Yeah, true. Ninety nine dollars. Come on, like that's a hundred bucks. Think of all the ponies. <laughs> but think uh, of all the pony drawings. Indeed. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna bring so that up every time fun. he's on. Uh, anyway, uh, Game Leon, thanks a lot for building the app for free, man. Because I haven't done, I haven't played with it yet. But from what I see you know, of all this, I can just imagine that this is going to be the coolest thing for EQD besides EQD music. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out recently, so hopefully um, as we, as I said, work on these things to improve them, they'll become nice facets that we can, you know, use to help improve the EQD experience. Now, when you go to EQD, there's an app for that too. (laughs) (laughs) There there is. No, there's a pony for that. That's the whole advertisement that was, yeah. Yeah, oh. Well, now that now there's a pony for EQD because um, I remember that commercial. There was an app for EQD. Now we actually it's a have... actually wait. Does EQD have a pony sona for its itself? Like oh. it's a pistol. EQD pony. Trixie. <laughs> <laughs> Trixie's our pony sona. <laughs> Look at the background, man. It's blue like Trixie. Obvious. Or Rainbow Dash. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> but but judging Dash from the. Sorry. Dash is, is our good, um, is also one of our frequent kind of pony sonas for EQD. She ends up in a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but most of the whole thing I see is Trixie. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you know, the boss likes a particular pony. <laughs> he, li- he, likes his tris- he likes his Trixie. He does indeed like his Trixie. <laughs> Can't blame him, man. Trixie is cool. Now, now that she's redeeming, so Moe, like, yay. <laughs> She did have a very good episode. I do admit that was one of my favorites from the season. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, indeed. All like the references, the whole thing. So much fun. So much fun. A lot of fun. Trixie is actually good now. <laughs> Come yeah. back, to my yes. little pony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think we bought the Kelpin long enough. So shall we end this, guys? Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Okay, moving on to the next topic is shoutouts. And my shoutout goes to Calpain. Thank you for saving this show. Without you, this show would be boring when we don't have any guests on. But anyway, thanks a lot, Calpain. You're a lifesaver. Well, it's a pleasure hanging out with you guys. It's a, it's always fun. Yay. Yay. Glad you like it. And um, I hope you'll come on again as a regular guest host. Uh, well, sure. Um, just um, give me some. Just give me a heads up. You know, <laughs> far ahead of time, so I can work into the schedule. Okay, we'll do. Note it. And Dan, what about you? Well, I'd like to shout out to Calpin as well. Thank you for coming on this week. And oh, no basically, problem. to the Bronies and the MBS Bronies. Yesterday, we had a little meet up, and you know, it was fun. It was really fun getting you know to see a lot of familiar faces once again. Yay! I wish I could be in there, but you know, living in the south. I'll fill you in about that later. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's end the show. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And also, if you want to email to us personally, you can email me at norman at com. And then, what's your email? You can email me at daniel at com. Okay, cool. And also, you can reach us on Twitter. Um, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and I'm at Roman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S T P I N K I E. Kalpain, do you have a Twitter? Uh, yes, I am at Kalpain EQD. Cool, awesome. So, um, you have an email that people can reach you if people want to hey. email you? Of course, um, you can find it on Equestria Daily under the Submit tab, or you can just email me at um, calpain at equestriadaily.com. Awesome, cool. So, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, and also like our Facebook page. Link will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And this has been Calpain. And we'll see you next week. Bye! shines down upon your face illuminating your eyes so bright as we run together into the night silly foes with silly dreams together eternally come out and play 
Upload a song. I use my mouse to do that. But you need to do the captcha. I've already done the captcha. <laughs> so that was the <laughs> typing. <laughs>